All right, guys, today, <clears throat> well, you see it's cold. It's about 32. I know, I know, all you people from the cold parts of the world are like, nah, it's not cold. Well, you know what? I'm a born and raised Texan, and it's cold, okay? It's just, it's just cold. Anyway, this thing right here, see, she's got a holes in her heat exchanger. Quoted out two months ago. You know, tenants and owners were doing this and uh, no one wanted to pay for it. So uh, when I quoted it, the parts were available. And then when a month later, when they approved it, parts were not available. They had to wait a month and they got mad. But, you know, that's, uh, that's the risk you take whenever uh, you want to sit on something like this. You're talking about your heater, all right? And you're in the winter. Like, was that money worth it that you saved? I mean, that's, that is my fair question. Was that money worth it? Uh, anyhow, they're not even here, which I kind of expected because, you know, it's cold. And uh, I imagine it's probably 40 in the workspace or in the uh, occupied space in there. And uh, I wouldn't want to work in that. Oh, look, there's a blower motor right there. Huh. I always wonder what that little. I haven't seen one of the little things before. All right. Anyway, we're going to pop. Oh, yep, fell right down. Okay. Well, that's definitely holy. She's holy. That heat exchanger went to church. All right, I have yet, I've done many heat exchangers, okay? But I have yet to do one of this, you know, configuration, the style. Um, I've mainly done uh, Linux, Allied, done some trains, but I've even done some carriers, but none that are configured like this. This is a little bit different in, uh, show you how if I can remember how in the world do I get this thing off it's been a while since I've been here about two months basically the heat exchangers that I've done will slide out this way like a just slide out and this one you know it's not configured like this this one's configured like this and if it were going to slide, it would have to slide that way, which is literally impossible because there's a condenser coil in the way. So I don't usually come to a job, uh, you know, unprepared. I mad. called around a little bit, talked to some buddies. They said this is one of the easiest ones to replace because it does come out this way, but sideways. So that. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's a little bit scary on my end because uh, that just means all of that is going to have to come out. All of that is going to have to come out. And I don't like, I don't like saying all of that. Um, you know, and then on top of that, we got the thing here that's, you know, in the way. And uh, is that gonna pose a problem? I don't know. We're gonna find out. Finna find out today. Yeah. I'm uh, eager to get this thing out to show everyone what, uh, you know, a religious heat exchanger looks like. Cause this one's, uh, this one's got all the religion in it. Um, but I got a lot of screws to dip out. I'm gonna not bore you with the, you know, sounds. Um, hopefully you can see everything that's going on in there right now. And um, I will click it, click it back on whenever I, you know, ready to slide her out. So I figure if 
I'm teaching and you're gonna learn how to do this, then I should probably just go ahead and, you know, step by step it, bore you with the, you know, of course I did take 40 of those out just now. You didn't get to see that, that's all right. Hey, you know, I mentioned in the past, whenever I got a heat exchanger that has holes in it, I do the, I do the whole thing, you know? Cause what you do is you come do your heat exchanger and don't do anything else. You know, that one goes bad or that one goes bad or something else. So I get the cheap safeties. I got the high limit, the rollout switch, flame sensor. I got an igniter being drop shipped today. Uh, we got the retainers, we got everything. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna come back on something, you know? I wanna do a one and done. And at this point, I'm curious, so. It's got a gasket on it. This is going to have to come out. The plate's going to have to come out. This plate's going to have to come out. And I bet you there's a retainer that holds the burners in. It would be easy, they say. I got to make sure I got a gasket here. So. This says, factory authorized, heat exchanger kit. I really hope that means, hey, I got gaskets in me. We're gonna find out. Mmm, looky there, gasketry. We're good to go. Let's continue zipping. <clears throat> you know, I just put them all right there. At the end, when it's all said and done, probably gonna have some spare parts. All right, we're gonna take the, uh, we're gonna take the inducer off first. Oh, yeah, she's on there. I uh, hope I got the battery to last for the day because I only brought one. How many? I got two lights on, so that ought to be enough for little zippies. And look, I gotta get the wrench out now. Uh, dang wrench. All right, get this one back here. Yeah, I got well, one or two left. And I gotta get the wrench. Handy dandy wrench kit. It's gonna be five sixteenths. And yeah, that's that's in a wonderful spot, you know. Good job, carrier. There it goes. Hindsight, I probably should have left one in the top. I wonder if that slides. Yeah, I think I just gotta loosen her up. I think it's gonna slide. Oh, no, there's one on the back. That's, that's not at all gonna be fun. I can even get to it. <clears throat> I definitely can't see it. I can tell you that much. And I can't even feel it now. There it is. Get on there, wrench. Yeah, carrier, you could have done this, you know, a little more better. I'm on it. There we go. It's moving. It's moving. I'm going to leave that one in there, too. Because I think I could just loosen these and slide it out. And that'll give me something to, you know, slide it back onto later on. Okay, we're moving, but are we gonna get up? All right, gonna have to take at least one of them out. We'll make it the one I can actually see. Come on. Are you close enough to turn? 
with the fingers? The answer is yes. Yes, you. Oh, not anymore. Not anymore. I got a guy with the property that's gonna come out here in a few minutes. I'll have to cut out when he shows up because, you know, people sometimes they don't like the pictures. Their face you don't put everywhere. Goodness gracious, how long are you? Rusty old screw. I know. Engineer says, I'll put the longest one right here. I like to make people cuss. Ah, oh, now that should come right up. Right, just like that. There we go. I'm just gonna move this off to, to the, this way. I'm not, I'm not sure. I guess I'm gonna have to cut some zip ties. Yeah, that's next on the list. Let's cut <clears throat> that and right there. Oh, nope. I said this one right here. Come on. <clears throat> okay. Get off. And then this one right here. Oh, leave me some wiggle room. I just want to back it off a little bit. So I can reach the brackets for the burner. There's one there. Can I reach it? This is the question. The answer is no. You cannot, Matthew. What about now? Get away. Nope, I can get the back one now. Mm. All right, got the back one now. And that one goes right there. Because why would I put them all in the same place? Don't get in that coil. Okay. Well, I've been on the phone this whole time, so uh, got the old one out, and the new one's looking pretty good. Got the bracket in the back there put on, got a few screws zipped into it, trying to figure out the gasket situation, because that's really confusing the crap out of me. You know, you get these kits with the gaskets, and then they look like a puzzle. And, uh, and they got the shapes that fit in here and there but they don't give you like directions on where in the world they're supposed to go so I'm doing that right now cleaning off old gasket putting on new gaskets here's the old one I gotta get the phone here in a second there's some ratty stuff right there this bracket's completely gone we got holes 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 I'll be back with you. All right, now that I'm done flapping my jaw on the phone, uh, yeah, they're dead. So, uh, let's take a closer look at this old heat exchanger. I know that I was really quick last time because my phone was ringing and all that good stuff, but basically we got holes. You know, we got that is not supposed to you know what have i heard it called before uh, weight reduction you know got a hole there this whole thing right here is completely cracked all the way through this is the worst of it this right here yeah. she's not supposed to go in like that you see this whole watch yeah that's that's bad that's bad the amount of rust in this thing let's take a look here we got that's that's some rust well, another suggestion I would have, see all the fiberglass gasketry? See, when you ain't got a breeze today, which is the only way I'm still alive, uh, 
that means you start scraping the gasket off the fiberglass just goes right in the smacker and you get it on your hands and it's all over my jacket i don't know if you can see the sparklies but you got to make sure you don't wipe your face with your hands or your jacket or anything like that because then you're going to get fiberglass in your lips and your nose and it is just it is just horrible uh, you would think that there'd be something better uh that could be used instead of this dang dang darn fiberglass uh but i gotta scrape this fiberglass off this inducer here and uh i don't have i'm not gonna take it out because that just takes time see i'm trying to not do that take time so i highly suggest you <laughs> put a mask on your face or something uh i don't have one so we're just gonna <laughs> blow it away from the old snout i just keep it from you know going into the lung area <laughs> oh not ridiculously important that you get these clean uh like shiny uh i want to get the dirt out of it i get the dirt get the dirt uh <laughs> okay that's good enough for me good enough for me we're gonna swing it around here and see if we can get it close to sitting in place Ugh. what is wrong with me here we go Oh, I'm gonna put that bottom screw in. That's what I'm gonna do. Put the bottom screw in so I can just set it on there. That's the dang screw I'm not gonna be able to see, which is gonna be a problem because I gotta have my gasket. Where's my gasket? There it is. That's not right. Yeah, sometimes you wonder. You play with blocks when you were a kid? I don't know, you know? So I'm gonna kinda use the outline that was there before and put this bottom screw in a in the hole and just get it started if i can find it i think we're close it's got to be right in there somewhere come on you make it through the gasket and find where is the hole Come on, I gotta be right there. Am I on it? I'm on it. All right. So, she's right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in. What, what is wrong with you? Stop getting I'm up. Dang. All right. More of the 57,000 screws. I'm gonna go ahead and hit one on the top as soon as I can get it in place and uh, go from there. Try to hit that notch just right. Make sure my gasket is covering the crack grooves. That's uh, between crack and groove. And then now we're going backwards. There we go. We're gonna move it, find a spot. Okay, I'm gonna make them kind of loose because you want to be able to adjust on it. It's probably not gonna be a perfect <coughs> match right off the bat yet. That has a little puff of fiberglass right in the good old lungs. Come on, you gotta be around there somewhere. Where's the hole? Where's the hole? Where are you? Oh, uh, don't do this to me. I know you're there. Somewhere. There. I see it. There it is. Go ahead and put that one on a little bit tighter. This one I don't think I could get to the first time, but hey, I got this handy tool here. I like this. If you don't have one of these, you need to get one of these. They're not. They're not expensive. This little 90 degree job here, 
made by Dewalt. Uh, get you in little tiny places that normally you can't get. Just like that. Um, yeah, you can get them at the at the Lowe's. I love the Lowe's. No, some of you guys are Home Depot people, but I'm a Lowe's guy. I like the Lowe's. Where is that hole? Where's the button? That's what I need is a button. There it is. Yeah, that hole is nowhere to be found. I have to start this one. Find the hole. Where are you at? I don't even see it. All I see is a big bunch of rust. I wonder if it's down. I might have to get a flashlight on that one. I'm not seeing anything here. Down or up. Not even when I pull it away. Well, what about this guy? Do we have holage? No. There has to be a hole there because something was in it before. Why wouldn't there be something in it now? It's got a little bit of weight reduction, but it's not rusted. It's not going to rust closed. If anything, it'll rust open. I have no idea what you can see right now because I just bumped the camera. You're probably just staring at a wire or something the whole time. I apologize. I gotta, I gotta find this thing. So I gotta figure out where these holes are and if they're there. Cause that inducer is gonna have to be pushed up against that thing. Nice and tight. I didn't bring my real flashlight. That one, yeah, she ain't got a hole there. I don't see it. Yeah. We're in line, but I definitely don't see a hole. So, um, gotta be at least one, because the back side of this inducer is gonna have to be pressed against the wall. And, um, I got nothing. Use my little screwdriver and fill around. Let's see here. Yeah, I, I got nothing on this one. And this side right here, I got nothing. So that's awkward. This is a situation where I'm probably going to tap one in because right now I've only got one, two, three, four screws in, but nothing holding the back side up, which is a bad way to be. I just don't, everything went back in the same way. This plate that I'm scratching on, this plate right here is uh, no longer made carrier stopped making them so down in the south that's okay because they just get a little bit rusty but if you're up north uh, you're gonna need to replace that plate so in a situation like this what you would have to do is basically you have to have it fabricated um, to spec so it can be replaced because uh, they'll burn up they'll burn up rust up all kinds of stuff I'm gonna I'm gonna drive one in there just uh because i got to it's got to have some support so if i can get my handy dandy dilly whopper here and just zip it on in i will use a little tapper here i'm just gonna hit one in the back here all right Right there. I'm gonna just drive it on in there. Ah, 
had to hold the back side up and I'm okay with that that one's good that one's good I know this back one is not good the one that I can't see that I had so much trouble with before is just you know just in a just in a bad spot oh, drop that damn thing around so that's good that's good here we go I'm gonna hit it I'm gonna get it two hands can I fit two hands come on get it where are you right there right there yes I'm on it yeah like an eighth a turn at a time this is gonna go great I know this is really fun to watch don't worry this will be over soon yeah soon before I get a cramp come on ah, she's on I'm happy with that I'm not gonna have any air leaks let's mount this burner and get on there you burner got one side on Probably should have gotten. Well, come on. You're there. Yeah, there she gets. Got on there. Make sure we're in tight mode. And just go ahead and toiten her up. Toiten this one too. There we go. All right. And, you know, I forgot about these. I probably should have done while the burner was out, but yeah, I didn't. So, whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and get us a new Flamo sensor, provided that they gave me the right one, and it looks like they did. Now that's wonderful. I should have done this first. What an idiot. Ah. Well, yeah. I'm gonna have to get way back her <laughs> to uh, reach on that one. That's okay. I'm not taking that burner off again. So, Felipe, gotta get Felipe here. And let's just hope we hit the right screw all the way in the back. <clears throat> hit a screw well see if that's the right one all right wonder if it's got two we'll let it find out oh, it's got only one come on out there's our flame sensor hooked on by a zip tie which i guess that was one i didn't cut earlier popped her off just like that all right get out of there get so there's a difference, kind of. So uh, this one sits like this. This one, what in the world? That's not, I mean, I can put it in like that, but it's only gonna have this side holding it. There's not a, oh, there is a pinhole. Well, uh, that's not right, because this is gonna go in a hole. See, there's a little, uh, I don't know if you can see that, uh, dilly thingy right there that goes into a hole this one doesn't have it this is the opposite and um, I'm not putting this in because I don't think it's gonna work it's just it has the wrong pieces to it there's not anything extruding so if I put this in like this with one screw She's just gonna flop around. And, man, I already threw this stuff in the trash. Get, get Box is deep. Not necessary. 
<sighs> you know, the other one looks good. If it becomes an issue, I'll take the uh, blame for it. Um, because I'm not going to carrier to pick up another one. So that goes right there. Now I gotta put this back in. I don't even know where the screw is. Where's my screwdriver? All the things in the world, all, oh, right there. And there's the screw, which is awesome because it's brass. That means it's not gonna stick to my magnetic uh, screwdriver here. And I'm just gonna have to fish it in there and hope for the best. So, see if I can hit the hole right. Make sure that I'm oriented right. That is a yes and yes. I'll put it up in there. And this other part, it's probably gonna be luck uh, that it's like sitting in the exact spot it needs to be for the screw to go in. We're gonna call that luck. Let's see if I can get lucky. And guess what? I am not getting lucky right now. You know, it's really hard. You can't see it. Of course, if I just pulled two screws out, I could take the whole burner out. And it'd be right in front of my face, you know, but we're not trying to make things easier. All right? It's not what's happening right now. We're trying to make things work in the hardest way humanly possible. We're trying to find a hole that we can't see. Ow, oh, cramp, cramp, cramp. Okay. Ow! Okay, I got a little cramp. That's all right. I'm not dead. I am just want to find the screw hole. That's all. Why did I take this out? Oh, because I was going to replace it. Was going to. Now, I think I figure if I can just swing it up and down a little bit, it's eventually going to hit a hole. And I might be way off target on that because I'm telling you, I'm swinging it up and down and I'm not finding any hole. Ah, come on. Where is it? If I, got, if I could just see, I don't even know what y'all are seeing right now. You know what? I'm going to work on this. There ain't no point in you watching me struggle over one freaking screw that shouldn't even have to take out. I'll get back with you. All right, all right, screws off. Time to get these limit switches replaced. Look, that one, that one's got a springy on it. All right, this one's a rollout. Wow, they changed the, see, I think it's just bad luck when I start the camera. This is the only one that matches, so we're gonna go ahead and just do that and uh hit this good wow she's really stuck on there I'm gonna hit this one real quick it's a high limit switch opens whenever the uh, uh burner compartment the heat exchanger compartment gets too hot it'll open up shut everything down and they're all different temperatures. Uh, 150, 160, 180, um, something like that. Now this guy right here, supposed to be a, where did I put the bag? Why do I do that? Look, I almost wiped my face with my jacket. It would have been really bad. So, what do we got here? What I need is a HH18HZ, which neither one of these is, is what I have. Opens on temperature rise, opens at 125, closes at 90. So both of these say they, contacts open on temperature rise manual, manual reset. So that says it's a switch FAP limit. Uh, manual reset. We're gonna go ahead and put it in. That's what we're gonna do. It should fit. 
fish did just fine. <clears throat> oh, that's lovely. Those are quarter inch screws, which I don't have my stupid quarter inch bit. So, uh, flathead. Why would they put quarter inch screws on one thing in the entire unit? Where is my screwdriver? Is that it? That's it. Check in a text message, all right? to just be different why because we want to be different that's why oh okay fine I'll adapt and overcome your difference Couldn't get a bit, could you? Why'd you have to lose your bit, Matthew? You know, I lose tools all the time. But I never find anybody's that they lost. So these things, they get rusty on points and eventually they just open and don't ever close again so this one is different it is a high limit but it is a manual reset and not an auto reset so when this thing trips yeah, you have to come up here and push the button I don't necessarily like those um, but they do serve a purpose it's called safety so, um, just like whenever we're doing refrigeration or air conditioning, um, there's limit switches for the compressor. So, low pressure switch and a high pressure switch. And a lot of people put the high pressure switch as a manual reset, which I think is dumb. Um, that's just my opinion. My opinion isn't really all that important but I don't like them because anytime okay if it cuts out on high head pressure it did it for a reason but when those pressure switches start getting weak and they cut out on a high head just because they're weak then you go out there reset it it turns on and you're like well there's nothing wrong with your unit <laughs> You just had a, you know, trip to pressure switch. You watch it run for 20, 30 minutes and it keeps going, so you leave. Next day, they make another call. I uh, did it again. Okay. And we could look into something a little deeper. I can't wait to get hot season so I can do some air conditioning and refrigeration videos. We do refrigeration in the off season, in the cold season, because you know, your walk-in coolers still have to be cooling. Get over here. Even in the wintertime. So, yeah, I think we should try to... Oh, I gotta put the 97,000 screws. Oh, yeah, if we don't plug these in, it tends to not work. So, we got that there. That's plugged in. That's not changed i have a new igniter that's being drop shipped today to the office uh, i'm probably going to be done with this before that happens which is unfortunate that means i'm gonna have to come back out here again i'm gonna have to drag my ladder off the truck i'm gonna have to set it up and come up here for an igniter this igniter works uh for now so we're just gonna put the panels on and 
fire it off and see what happens. Uh, I'll uh, keep you from being bored from this part. Come back whenever I'm ready to fire it off because there's really nothing left, but figuring out how many screws I'm gonna have left over when this is done, that's, that's important, that's gonna happen. Uh, and just getting, you know, the trash cleaned up. See you in a little bit. Okay, I got most of it uh, buttoned up. One thing I didn't mention is when you put a new heat exchanger in, you gotta burn it off. So usually this panel will cover the supply. Uh, it gets mostly. When we can kick this thing off, we're gonna have the smoke and the stink is just gonna go whoosh. Uh, we can let it run for about five minutes or so and call it good. I gotta turn the gas on. Golly! You know, wrench to turn the gas. It's a freaking handle. Look, extra gaskets. Yeah. Look, I have a spare parts. I have them all the time. See if I can get this gas turned on. Uh. Good gosh. All right, gas is on. Handy jumper. Go with a yellow flavor this time. Go ahead and jump out our heat. Which is W1. Yeah, come on. These things are cold, so they're really toit. W1 and R should automatically activate the blower. You don't have to jump out G if you're jumping out your heat. If you do have to jump out G to turn the blower on while it's giving a call for heat, then you have an issue somewhere else. Okay. The resistors and whatnot make the blower come on. Look, there's a wire. It's not attached to anything. That's really... I wonder if I should... I'm going to tuck it right there like we didn't see it. All right. Everything's good. Gas is on. Blah, blah, blah. We've got a call for heat. Let's give it some fire. Uh, I'm probably going to... Yeah, I'm going to put this side panel on. I'll be right back. Ah. Okay. I think we're finally ready. Um, you know, I noticed this professional drain line holder. We're just going to leave it like that. Let's get some fire. Please turn on. Power. Inducer. Gas. The igniter is not working. Hmm. So that's nice. Okay. So what a somebody probably should have done is uh, cleaned on that igniter a little bit. That is getting replaced today, but I really want to see this thing. You know, I want to see it shoot off some flames. So I'm going to try and just touch it a little bit and get the ends. If the ends got corrosion or rust on them, well, you don't get sparks that way. Got to have a little bit of gappage. The gappage on this is very small. I'm gonna try and bend them out a little bit. I know you can't see anything that I'm doing, but basically two pieces of metal that come in to a close point and between those two is where your spark is gonna be. If you don't have enough gap, your spark's gonna be too tiny and it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna be enough. So I'm just increasing that gap slightly. We're also gonna make sure that we're plugged in over here all the way, nice and secure. Uh, try it again, and I'm gonna try and put my peepers on that thing and see if we're losing the spark somewhere between here and here. Uh, sometimes these boards will go bag and they'll spark internally. Um, that's not good. Let's see. That's all it needed. 
see if the flame sensor works. Yes. You know the flame sensor works whenever it stops trying to spark. So I'm glad to know our flame sensor works since that one is not. I'm gonna come out the other end over here. And I'm gonna just soak in the air. Now blower's not running yet. It's not gonna turn on until the temperature gets up to a certain degree or there's a delay, like a 30 second delay or a minute delay. But we can see the, the smoke. It's all the oils burning off. Oh, <laughs> that was gross. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, don't stand in front of that whenever it does that. Because <laughs> you're going to breathe in some crap you don't need to be breathing in. So we're going to let it burn off for about five minutes. I'm going to button her back up. We'll ride a bill. And uh, I'm going to stand right here and get warm. Because it's cold. Pack up the lighter. Get my trash. Drink all of my water. And, and then uh, I'm going to go change clothes. Because I got fiberglass covering me from head to toe. Uh, that's all I got for you. We're running. Till next time. Okay. I think we're finally ready. Um, oh, I noticed this professional drain line holder. We're just going to leave it like that. Let's get some fire. Please turn on. Power. Inducer. Gas. The igniter is not working. Hmm. So that's nice. Okay. So what a somebody probably should have done is uh cleaned on that igniter a little bit that is getting replaced today but i really want to see this thing you know i want to see it shoot off some flames so i'm gonna try and just touch it a little bit and get the ends if the ends got corrosion or rust on them well you don't get sparks that way gotta have a little bit of gappage the gappage on this is very small I'm gonna try and bend them out a little bit. I know you can't see anything that I'm doing, but basically two pieces of metal that come in to a close point and between those two is where your spark is gonna be. If you don't have enough gap, your spark's gonna be too tiny and it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna be enough. So I'm just increasing that gap slightly. We're also gonna make sure that we're plugged in over here all the way, nice and secure. Uh, try it again and I'm gonna try and put my peepers on that thing and see if we're losing the spark somewhere between here and here uh, sometimes these boards will go bad and they'll spark internally um, that's not good let's see that's all it needed let's see if the flame sensor works Yes. You know the flame sensor works whenever it stops trying to spark. So I'm glad to know our flame sensor works since that one is not. I'm gonna come out the other end over here and I'm gonna just soak in the air. Now blower's not running yet. It's not gonna turn on until the temperature gets up to a certain degree or there's a delay like a 30 second delay or a minute delay but we can see the the smoke it's all the oils burning off oh <laughs> that was gross <laughs> oh gosh yeah don't stand in front of that whenever it does that because <laughs> you're gonna breathe in some crap you don't need to be breathing in uh, we're going to let it burn off for about five minutes. 
I'm going to button her back up, write a bill, and uh, I'm going to stand right here and get warm because it's cold. Pack up the ladder, get my trash, drink all of my water, and, and then uh, I'm going to go change clothes because I got fiberglass covering me from head to toe. Uh, that's all I got for you. We're running. Till next time.